Hello Heroes, 4 Kate here with a closer look at the roots of one of the great comic book artists of the Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age, and even into the Modern Age, Russ Heath. Heath isn't one of the celebrity names in comic book history. Not as many know of him in mainstream circles outside of comics. I originally started out to be an illustrator, but uh, then I got married and children started coming and uh, I had to take whatever was around and that's how I got into the comic thing. I joined Marvel in 46, I think it was. And, uh, of course, it was called, I think, Timely then. And uh, so they had all the different kinds of books, and whichever ones you fit into, you got a shot at. So it was because of Stan Lee, uh, who I gave me my first steady job in, in 46. But it's easy to see why he's so respected inside the world of comics just by looking at his art. While Heath was no doubt very talented, it was really his drive to add detail and authenticity into his work that made it stand out in basically every genre of comics he ventured into. And over his immense career, he did just about everything, except ironically superheroes. He didn't do many of those. In fact, we did a video last year that highlighted his stint on Batman, one of his rare forays into superhero comic book art. And you can see that at the link in the clip in the upper right corner. But it's kind of fitting that he was so well known for more real world genres like westerns and war titles and even his Sea Devils diving stories uh, for DC in the 1960s. But he's probably most identified for the Western comics, where he got his start, actually, for Marvel in 1946. But while Heath is famous for his authentic stories of the Old West, he admits he didn't know it all firsthand. I grew up in New Jersey. Uh, well, does not very Western, but... <laughs> However, Heath was a rabid fan of Charles Marion Russell, an early prominent artist of the American Old West. And Heath did have a personal connection to the Old West. I started with Westerns probably because uh, my father used to be a cowboy, and uh, that was, I was very susceptible when I was small to that following that, so I learned a lot about Westerns. So yes, while Heath was a Jersey boy, he had the rare distinction among Jersey boys of having a dad who used to be a cowboy. And that was probably a pretty big deal back then, as you might know if you ever watched the movie Christmas Story. Wow, there it is. The holy grail of Christmas gifts. The Red Rider 200 shot range model air rifle. American cowboys actually were one of the early heroic icons of fiction, certainly predating superheroes. So uh, when he became a comic professional in 1946 and was working on Western comics, he kind of had a leg up on some of his peers. But Heath says his commitment to realism all goes back to the days when his dad used to take him to the Western movies. And it's Almost impossible to overstate for modern audiences how big the Western genre was in early American fiction and specifically in early film and television. It pretty much dominated the market, so much so that little subgenres of Western started popping up, such as what was to become to known as the singing cowboy. And the singing cowboy was uh, someone who was uh, of a more gentler demeanor, someone who wore uh, more fancier clothing with very intricate stitching and was prone to breaking out into song at the drop of a hat. Guitar and learn a chord or two. You gotta learn to yodel lady. Any old tune will do. This genre of films made Roy Rogers and Gene Autry some of the biggest names in Hollywood. But Russ Heath's dad wasn't having any of it. You know, he started as a kid with Charlie Russell, a Western artist, cowboys, uh, illustrators, and straight through there. And going for... My father took me to a lot of Westerns. Uh, they used to have these Saturday morning uh, continuous... continued next week time, 12 shows maybe. Serials? Serials. And... Uh, he, having been a cowboy, you know, here comes this guy with all these beaded shirts and all that stuff. And he says, that's a bunch of hogwash. You know, no cowboy in his right 
thing would be seen in a shirt like that. And he says, everybody, every cowboy that looks at it knows that this guy that did that was not a cowboy. Or, you know. So I got from that that I should try to make the people, such as in the war stuff, I don't want some soldier to look at this thing and say, well, this guy's never been in the service because look at this. And so you try, that's one of the reasons I got into trying to get it all correct. And be, and very, you know, I had a very literal approach to everything. It's a funny story, but really an insight into Russ Heath, because realism clearly drove his artwork, and it was something that went beyond the Western genre, and even beyond the war genre, it went into all of his work, such as the Sea Devil scuba diving work he did in the 60s for DC. And then I, I taught scuba diving uh, later on, and uh, which is why I was... I probably chosen for the uh, Sea Devils work I did. Yes, Russ Heath was a certified scuba diver, and in the 1960s, he got a chance to combine his diving knowledge with his legendary flair for artistic detail on the Sea Devils. His authentic approach to the look and feel of the Sea Devils equipment is perfectly juxtaposed against the fantastic creatures the Sea Devils fought and resulted in some dynamite artwork. So if you're looking to explore some rare, obscure corners of DC Comics' Silver Age history, check out those Sea Devils issues. Russ Heath, who left 70 years of amazing art for us to enjoy. We'll see you here next time on Hero Journalism. (laughs) 